Hello there, Hillsong Youth. I am so excited to bring a word today, and I believe that I have a word that is especially for you. And I want to read to you today from 1 Timothy chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles right now. Read along with me. It says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Now I'm just going to say that one more time just to make sure that you got that. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. My message today is titled this, I've got the power. I've got the power. Do you realize how powerful you are? If you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord of your life, you are powerful. And I'm not talking, you know, genie in a bottle, powerful, rub a lamp and Robin Williams or Will Smith appears to grant you three wishes. I'm not talking that kind of cosmic power. I'm talking the reality of salvation through Jesus working in and through your life. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of salvation, the power of salvation. I'm talking the power of redemption. I'm talking the fullness of forgiveness, that we can receive grace and mercy for our sins. It is powerful. Do you realize, do you realize the power of prayer? the power of prayer, that when we pray, we talk to God, that there is an exchange that takes place between heaven and earth, and we get to communicate with God. It is powerful. And as we make that exchange, that divine exchange, things change, things on earth change. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of worship, the power of worship, that when we worship God, it's not just songs. It's not just pretty songs. It is incredible that when we worship, we invite the presence of God. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of the Word, the power of our Bibles, that when we open the Bible, it's not just ink on paper, it's not just words, but it comes alive. The Word comes alive and it reads us and it brings about change as we apply it into our everyday lives. It is powerful. I'm talking the power of being filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is powerful powerful. And we have been given an incredible inheritance in receiving Jesus. Philippians 3 verse 10 says this, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power, the power of His resurrection. I love it in Deuteronomy 28 verse 13. It says this, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. In the message translation, it says that you will be the top dogs, the top dogs. (laughs) I like that. So I want to encourage you today. I want to remind you just how powerful you are, because this is the promise of God, that we have inherited this power because of Christ living in us and dwelling in us. It is the reality of the gospel. It is the reality of being a Christian, that we've got this power, and yet, And yet sometimes I I think that as believers, we forget. We forget that we are the head and not the tail. We forget that we are above and not beneath. We forget that we have this advantage. We forget. And so if today I can remind you of that, then, then that's what I wanna do. That's what I believe God wants to do. Ephesians 1 verse 15, it says this, Because of this, since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your tender love toward all His devoted ones, my heart is always full and overflowing with thanks to God for you as I constantly remember you in my prayers. 
I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know Him through your deepening intimacy with me, with Him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of His calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that He finds in us, His holy ones. And I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of His immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted Him to the place of highest honour and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. And now He is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government and realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised, not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. Can I please hear an amen, amen. And it wouldn't be right if I didn't share with you a story about my son, Jack. He is hilarious. He is about to turn seven years old and we are working on his salvation. He is a work in progress. But I'll tell you what, he has us wrapped around his finger. He is the coolest kid ever. And, um, and I wish you could meet him because he would definitely make you laugh. He is hilarious. And so I've been um, telling him about, about Jesus. I've been, uh, been encouraging him to learn uh, stories in the Bible. And recently uh, he said to me, Mom, do you think that I don't know about Jesus? I know about Jesus. And this is what he said. He said, step one, God. Step two, light. Step three, day and night and ocean and land. Step four, he was going, uh, man and woman and then snake and then apple. I'm not joking. This is what he said next. And then Moses slayed a giant. <laughs> and then he said, and then Noah, Noah died on the cross. This is, <laughs> this is my son, Jack. He is hilarious. But as I've been reading through these incredible Old Testament stories, I've been so encouraged by heroes who were just everyday, ordinary young men and young women of God. They were limited. They had all things coming against them. And yet they understood this power, this supernatural power that they had by being God's people, by being God's people, powerful. And this is what I want to say to you today is that you are Moses. You are Moses who led the people of Israel out of Egypt, split the oceans, walked them into their future. You are Moses and you are David. David, the young, unlikely king who was not the first choice or the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth or seventh choice. And yet, he was anointed to be king. And although he was small in stature, he slayed a giant. And you are Joseph who overcame betrayal and saved a nation from famine. And you are Esther, where are all my girls at, who risked it all to know her for such a moment as this, her for such a time as this, that she would stand before, uh, before the king on behalf of, of, of her people who would be saved. And you are Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego who refused to bow down and worship another God who stood in the fire. You are these everyday ordinary men and women of God who even though they had limitations, even though they had things coming against them, they tapped in to the immeasurable power of God. And it is powerful. And so could it be, could it be, could it be, could it be that just maybe, just maybe as the church, as, as God's people, that we've forgotten, we've forgotten just how powerful we are. 
in Psalm 73, verse 42, it says, they did not remember his power the day that he redeemed them from the oppressor. And I just want to say in, in, in 2020, here we are, what an insane year that we're all living, that we're collectively uh, living together. There is a global pandemic happening. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, we're living in isolation. There are matters of injustice that are just heart-wrenching and so painful to, to process. And I think, you know, in a, in a time where fear is consuming our culture, where anxiety, where anxiety is crippling more and more people, where depression is plaguing souls and taking lives, where differences and hatred um, are splitting up families and friends and churches and businesses, and there are so many divides, where the earth is groaning, literally. Uh, and like I said, where there is so much injustice, all across the earth. I'm thinking that right now is not the time to forget the immense and immeasurable power of God that dwells within us. And I'm not here to highlight all the doom and gloom, but I'm here because I believe that it's time that as a generation, as young people, we rise up and we remember that we remember that this power is invested into us. And it's time for us to rise up and wage a war of faith in this generation. It is powerful, that we would understand that we can be living, living advertisements of God's power. And so what happens? What happens when we forget the immeasurable power within us? I think this is what happens. Number one, we lose our confidence. We lose our confidence. It says in Hebrews 10 verse 35, it says, So do not throw away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. And I just was thinking about this, and I think we don't just throw away our confidence. I think that what happens is perhaps we misplace our confidence. We place our confidence in the wrong things. And um, I was I was reading uh, direct references to confidence in the scriptures, and in Philippians one verse sixteen it says, "For I am confident of this very thing, that He." He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 4 verse 16, it says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that when we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And Proverbs 14 verse 26, it says, In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. And so this is what I believe. I believe that we misplace our confidence or lose our confidence when we place our confidence in ourselves. Self-confidence, it sounds good, it sounds amazing, but I don't know about you, any time that I put my confidence in myself, it's pretty shaky, it's pretty risky. And, and yet these scriptures show us that it's not about putting confidence in ourselves, but it's like this, for I am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work or, or let us draw near confidence to the throne of grace or in the Lord, in the Lord there is strong confidence. And I think that we lose our confidence when we, when we stop putting our confidence in God and when we start putting our confidence in ourselves or the things of this world. I think sometimes we can put our confidence in our jobs or our families or our calling. Um, and then what happens is, is that we lose our jobs. We lose our jobs and our confidence is gone. Or our calling doesn't look like we thought it would and our confidence is gone. Or people let us down and it hurts and it's discouraging and our confidence is gone. And I used to think that confidence was a personality type, but now I know. Now I know that confidence is not a personality type. Confidence is trust in God, is placing your trust in God. What happens when we remember 
the immeasurable power that is within us. I believe this. We know our authority. We know our authority. Power moves. Now, if you haven't heard of power moves, power moves are things that you can use in everyday life that give you the air of authority, that give you the edge over other people. So for example, this is, this is a power move. When my wife gets mad at me, sometimes I like to go into the fridge and pantry and tighten the lids to all the jars and bottles. Therefore, she has to speak to me at some point. That is a power move. Or this one. When a guest arrive at your door, ask them to remove their shoes before they walk in, but keep yours on. That is a power move. Or this one, this is the most brutal one that there is. When introducing a friend, I like to make finger quotation marks in the air when announcing their job title. This is Karen, she's a brain surgeon. <laughs> or I like to say this, this is Pete, he is a pastor, which is, re that's really mean, sorry Pete. It wouldn't be right if I didn't make fun of him a little bit. That is, a power move, a power move. Everybody knows those people who, who work those power moves. They, we've all got those people in our lives. Martin Luther, there's this incredible story about, about, about Martin Luther. He says that one night he woke up in the middle of the night to the devil at the foot of his bed. He took a look at him and he said, oh, it's only you. And he rolled over and went back to sleep. That is a power move. Sanger Samways, I know that some of you know him. If not, he is uh, a reverend, a theologian, a man of God, a respected man of God in our church here in Australia. And he says this, you can tell your God how big your problem is, or you can tell your problem how big your God is. That is a power move. And so when the enemy throws his devices at you, we need to understand our authority. We need to remember the authority that we have in being God's people. We have the advantage. We have the authority. We need to take dominion. And I believe that we need to talk it and we need to walk it. We need to talk it. So when life throws stuff at you, and it will, is life difficult and real? Yes. Is there an enemy that hates your guts? Yes. Is life going to present us with uncertainty and the unexpected and things that aren't going our way? Yes. But in that moment, we have the air of authority. And I'll tell you what it is. It is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, it changes everything. And I believe that we need to clear the air. And what I mean by that is that we can clear the air, we can change the atmosphere with the name of Jesus. That when things get hard, you can just speak out the name of Jesus and it changes how you see things. It changes how you're thinking. It changes, it brings peace. That is the power of the name of Jesus. Or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night and your soul is depleted or perhaps you're filled with with fear. It's there. We can quietly speak out the name of Jesus and it changes things. And that's the power of song. The power of song is that we sing to God. We sing to God and we speak of who He is. Not because God doesn't know who He is. He knows who He is. But when we sing who God is, it reminds us. It edifies our soul. It reminds our soul that God is in control, that He is supreme, that He is powerful, that He is magnificent, that He is in control. And it reminds us who God is in our lives. And I believe we need to walk it. We need to walk in authority. Matthew 28, is the, it is the great commission. And Jesus says this, He said, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, 
even to the end of age. And I love this because Jesus, who has all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth is inferring to us that that same power, that same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that is within us. So go, he says, go and walk in it. It is powerful. And I love this and I wanna finish with this. Luke 10 says, Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority, all my authority to trample over His kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power that Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing, nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Isn't that powerful? And so I wanna say to you, you've got the power. You've got the power in receiving Jesus Christ into your life. That same power that raised Him from the dead is the same power that is living within you. And so as you go, as you do your thing, as you face the challenges in your life head on, understand, remind yourself who God is, who's in control, who has the advantage. It's powerful and we've got that power in Jesus' name. Amen.